Gil is absent. Okay. Well, I do show that we have a quorum, so we'll go ahead and move forward uh, with our meeting. We, uh, we have our meeting minutes from the September 3rd, 2020 meeting. I make a motion they be approved as submitted. A motion from Farner. Second. Second from Almadoon, I believe that was. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, meeting minutes are approved. We have nothing under unfinished business, and we really only have one item under new business tonight, uh, large scale and a waiver uh, for the proposed fire station at 212 Glasgow Road. Um, Mr. Lynn, please. Okay, thank you, sir. We'll dive right in, and this will look familiar to the commission as we did see this under a CUP last month. So as a reminder, CEI Engineering is working with City of Bell Vista, the fire chief on this new fire station, Glasgow and Edinburgh. And we now have a, a legal address for it, as you can see, 212 Glasgow Road. The civil set we have depicts the location for the station and associated improvements. They're proposing access drives onto both of the streets. As indicated further and mentioned a second ago, they're also requesting a waiver, which is communicated throughout this report and this one presentation. Um, the subject of that being that the Western Drive onto Edinburgh being less than required by the um, access code for reasons that um, you'll see in the report and that we'll speak to uh, here in a couple minutes. Otherwise, besides that item, the proposal is meeting the requirements of the code with just a few, um, a few general comments for the applicant to address. Um, we received from the applicant after this report was published a, a standard response page from CEI in which they had actually reviewed all the comments, provided really thoughtful responses to each of them, all of them that were straightforward things that they could do immediately. They're already working on with their revised submittal, which we'll see next time. Um, and then basically spoke to some of the ins and outs of why they're requesting the, um, the waiver that we just mentioned a second ago. Um, and I'll let them speak to any, any of those items from, from, from their responses uh, more as we, as we move on. As a reminder, this is a three acre property currently developed and jumping down to the future land use map. You can see here, as we mentioned last time, this is close to a civic services area on the future land use map. Otherwise surrounded by um, quite a bit of low density residential. Um, it's not uncommon in, in Bella Vista. This does have access to a minor arterial uh, road and it's right across the street from Branchwood Recreation Facility. You can see here on the zoning map how it's located at the northeast corner of Glasgow and Edinburgh and the star marks the approximate location of that western drive and the rest of it being within the aqua limits of aquaboard polyline around that parcel. We'll go ahead and jump into the review criteria now. The first one being the completeness of the application. Um, staff's analysis here um, is that Everything was submitted completely as required. And as, as noted further in the report, this waiver that they're seeking from 107.317.B2 is, is a waiver that requires drives from intersections of, of this size to be located 250 feet from, from the intersection. And um, we'll get into that a little bit more in a second. Um, number two, violation of any laws. No, no apparent violations being proposed with this, with this application. Dangerous traffic conditions, uh, that review criteria and all those criteria within. Uh, staff's comment here is that the proposal does not appear to contribute to traffic concerns relative to the general slash current activity in the contextual area. With two means of ingress and egress, as well as long driveways being proposed in the civil set, the facility is designed with topography and context in mind to maximize those lines of sight. So when people are coming in and coming out, they've got, they've got ample room to see what's going on with the context based on how they're designing with the topo. Regarding access to utilities, 
Um, quite a few things are in order in that regard already. Carol Electric serves the site and they provided their general connection comments to the applicant. The POA does provide water to this location and is aware of the proposed layout. Their engineer has looked at this set of uh, civil set. Areas for the septic tank field um, are also depicted for approval by ADH. And you can see those areas on the civil set. Regarding drainage conditions and how they're handling those, you'll see on the grading plan how a detention pond has been shown. Uh, this will provide the necessary stormwater mitigation required by the calculations in CEI's drainage report. And, and any other actions? Uh, no, not really, because they handled the uh, land use aspect of this um, back with the CUP 2020-35327 um, that, we, that we saw recently. Um, we'll jump down to the, so this will cover um, this next part of the report is going to cover waiver 2020-35911 agenda item. And the request here is to waive the separation requirement for this Western Drive, which we'll look at in a second, and construct this access drive as shown. Uh, I noted in this report, it's approximately 140 feet from the intersection. Um, the engineer has actually, Jacob Shy has actually, with CEI, he's He's to mention it, and he'll he can speak to that more in a when he speaks earlier. Any excuse me later. Um, so they're requesting this in lieu of the required 250 feet from the intersection as stipulated, and the the language that stipulates this distance it just says that access drive shall be no closer than 250 feet measured from the right of way of an intersection involving a major or minor arterial to the center of the drive. So the code is saying. Okay, at minor arterials, we're going to have more traffic. And so we want people um, who are going to be using this driveway to have more of an opportunity to see what's going on. We also want to minimize potential stacking. Um, and so as we go through this analysis, we'll speak to more, uh, um, we'll dive in more to why staff is finding that these criteria meet for, um, for allowing this lesser distance. The number, the first item, are there any special circumstances or conditions affecting this land um, such that the strict application of the provision of these regulations, that distance, would deprive the applicant, applicant of the reasonable use of this land? And the comment here being that this item meets. And the main reason is that the entire depth, so the south to north dimension on this parcel, is just a little more than this distance, this 250. It comes about 270. And so if you imagine uh, measuring from the center line of the driveway 250, that puts the edge of the driveway um, almost to the property line, potentially creating, when you do the grading and the fill for that, um, you're looking at um, a more complex grading plan to make sure you're not doing harm to the neighbor to the north. Further, this location would also interfere with the proposed location of the required uh, detention facility. So you can see uh, on, a, on another sketch in the report, how that would just pretty much go through that, um, dr that drainage facility. Um, this would involve uh, steeper terrain at this location also, which would require a steeper climb for these fire trucks um, and emergency vehicles uh, accessing the site. Uh, number two, uh, is the waiver necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right of the applicant? Um, here, this item meets placing the Western Drive at the required distance would result in an approximate 13% slope to the site. And you can imagine with emergency vehicles um, coming and going from this site, especially during inclement weather, that's going to uh, inhibit, uh, that's going to complicate, I should say, those, those operations. Number three, that the granting of the waiver will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare meets. This Western Drive is also the longest of the two drives. So you'll notice um, the Southern Drive on the Glasgow on the civil set. It's still a decent distance to those bays, but it's shorter. This is the longer drive. And so um, as we've noted here, the site, uh, line of sight and site triangles are preserved in the design such that vehicles um, entering and exiting from this location should have time to study the overall context of what's going on based on the traffic of this location. 
And finally, that the waiver, if granted, um, uh, such that it will not have the effect of preventing orderly subdivision of other lands in the area in accord with the provisions of the regulations. Uh, and this item meets as well. Um, this, this aspect of the site plan is not going to affect um, off-site development or subdivision. If anything, it may um, assist with future development of the parcel to the north. Okay, and we're gonna jump on into the civil set here. Um, so in the middle of this plan, you can see the layout of the uh, fire station building. And you can see from the south here where the wide drive accesses Glasgow Road. And then the longer drive that I mentioned, you can see on the north side of the facility um, and how that acts how that um, accesses onto Edinburgh there on the west side. The hatched areas, these hatched rectangles that you see off to the northeast of the footprint of the building, those are the septic areas proposed for um, the wastewater associated with the site. Okay, this is a picture of the proposed grading with the site and all the proposed contour lines that you see north of the building um, that's to allow for the um, detention of the water as required by the stormwater provisions. And so you can see kind of uh, a couple of ponding areas there, primary ponding areas northwest of the, north of the drive, how that pulls water to that direction um, whenever that is needed. And you can see how they're keeping limits of disturbance off of the proposed lateral field areas so that those areas can um, perk and do what they need to do for the uh, septic system. The overall limits of disturbance is shown on this erosion plan here and also more details are provided in the notes and legend regarding how they're going to uh, manage construction stormwater during those activities. This is a utility plan showing the connections of all the essential services. This is the landscape plan showing how they're proposing to provide the um, frontage trees, the parking trees, and uh, as well as the screening shrubs for the various areas um, as required by the And you can see also the large white areas outside of the limits of disturbance, that being where they're proposing the existing um, woodland. And um, we'll likely see more um, from that angle as, um, as this project moves forward. Also a preservation area down in the Southwest corner. Okay, these are planting details to make sure these trees and shrubs are planted um, per the um, adequate standards and other civil details as well. The boundary and topo survey of the property. So you can see here in the middle how um, for Bella Vista, this site is, it does have a relatively flat area um, towards the, the south and central part of the site. But then those contour lines get closer as you get towards the northwest. Um, and then also um, go towards the ravine off to the east, northeast. Uh, I'm not going to jump to these items right this minute, but we can refer to them as, as needed. This was a page in the packet that provided a link to the full drainage report, the actual applications submitted, as well as the warranty deed. This is a page showing the planning um, division comments on this project. And like I said, they are, they are actively working on all these items. Some of them are kind of general housekeeping items like show the setbacks, uh, make sure your parking chart is, is shown as needed, a um, couple legend things. And just a red line note here that that first item about the distance, that's what we talked about previously with the uh, waiver. This shows you a quick um, little sketch with the red line of where that full dimension would require that Western Drive to be if they were to meet that 250. And as you can see, it's nearly at the Northwest corner of the property. And it's also in this area where both the ditch and the property slopes um, increase, do increase um, significantly. Okay, 
these are the um, standard comments from the review engineer. And um, there's some standard comments regarding pipe sizes and labeling and CEI has noted how they've addressed those items with their, with their set as they move forward. This is the review comment from the POA Water Department. Um, he's basically saying um, no other comments other than clarifying um, some, uh, some pipe sizes on site. And then this is the Carroll Electric standard connection comments. And CEI is on this call. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say that the staff report is wrapped up and um, let the chair take it back from there. All righty, do we have any questions for staff? Yes, I've got uh, three. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mr. Farner. Can we, uh, can we bring up uh, CEI's page C1? All right, on that, show me where the retention pond is with your pointer. Okay. Are you able, when I move my mouse like this, Mr. Farner, are you able yeah. to see? Okay, good. I wasn't sure, so thanks. Okay. Um, it's roughly in this area that I'm my mouse over right here. It's, it's all along this northern edge of this drive. And if you want, I can switch to one one of the next pages that shows the grading lines and we can see it even better on that one. Well, that's all right. Just so I knew generally where it was. I wasn't sure. All right. Second question on that same drawing on, as I'm looking at it on the right side of the building, there are two straight lines coming from the property line. What is that? Great question. Those are just, um, those are dimensions showing how far they are from the side property line with two edges of the proposal. So okay, uh, I'll zoom in just a little bit more and you can see those. So yeah, they've provided some survey points, some benchmark survey points on here. And um, so that's just gonna help them true in the building to the correct location. Yeah, I, I just didn't know what that was. I didn't know what it was, well, whatever. All right, the third question I have is, um, Will there be lights on uh, Glasgow so that when the fire trucks come out, they're flashing lights or something of that nature? Will Glasgow have street lights? Uh, that would indicate when there's an emergency vehicle coming out of the building. Would there be flashing lights or something of that nature? Okay. That's a good question. As far as folks coming east and west on Glasgow, if they're going to be anything out on Glasgow to give folks a heads up more than just the fire truck yeah. coming out of the driveway. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to write that down. I do not know the answer to that. We may have to ask the um, applicant about that. Do you okay, want me to step in now? Or? That's okay. all the questions I have then. Okay. That's great. And Jacob, Jacob chimed in. He said he can answer your question right now. Yeah, so if you look at just south of Glasgow Road, you can see there's a couple notes down there that are a little darker. And so what we're doing is we're going to take the existing signs that are already out there for Fire Station 3 that's just to the east, and we're going to move them so that they are in of the correct distance from this exit where the fire trucks are going. Will they be flashing lights? Yes. They will, they will act just as they do now for Fire Station 3. They, they light up whenever uh, fire trucks coming out of there. Okay. Well, I live on the way on the east side, so I don't ever see that. Okay. So okay. they are flashing lights. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's all the questions I had. All Mr. right. Chairman. Anybody else have any questions for staff yeah, or the, uh, the engineer? Mr. Chairman, yeah, this is Shockey. Um, I have a couple yes, of questions. Sir. So I, I understand why well, they're asking for the waiver. So the idea is to uh, for emergency vehicles to go in from Glasgow and then get out from the other way or vice versa, I'm assuming. 
So uh, the they couldn't they couldn't circulate the drive to all come to Glasgow, avoid the side entrance drive, and make the front entrance drive wider on Glasgow, similar to what we have on Trafalgar up here on the fire station on Trafalgar. Derek. Okay. Um, that is a good question. Uh, if I could, I'd like to defer to the applicant on that because I didn't hear those contextual initial discussions about why two drives is needed instead of one. Um, if you like, I can uh, defer to him right now, or if you have yes. that one down and come back to it, if you have another question. Uh, well, I'd I'll, I'll like to hear an answer to that one first. Okay. Jacob or Casey, can one of you guys speak to that? Sure, I can go first and then Casey can add to it if he needs to. But um, so for a fire truck, to, a fire truck in general, they need to be going forward uh, most of the time. If they have to back up, they have to actually get out of the truck, put cones down. They've got beepers. They got to have people directing them with a fire truck. And so the way that this is set up is they they come off Glasgow, they come down Edinburgh and they they come in through the back and they pull in straight as they're coming into the apparatus bays. And so when they get an emergency call, they come straight out of those apparatus bays onto Glasgow Road and that helps their response times. And so you don't really want traffic coming in from Glasgow into that larger uh, entrance. You would want all traffic funneled through the back. That way there's less interaction between vehicles. Okay, I just wanna make sure we looked into that because uh... So even with the uh, the front entrance Glasgow being made wider to allow them to use that for in a circulator on the building from the west side and go in from the back and come forward. So that option is not feasible. Is that what you're saying? That's correct, because there might be three fire trucks in each of those apparatus bays. If you can see um, in that entrance off Glasgow, each of those rectangles is an apparatus bay where a fire truck could sit. And so if there's an emergency and all of them need to leave at once, there's, there's literally no room for anything to be entering and it's okay. pretty unsafe if they would. Okay. And you have enough. Uh, so uh, I'm assuming you have enough room for turning radiuses on the existing streets to make the turns in and out. Yes, sir. They're wide enough for the trucks to turn. Yes, around. Sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right. Are there any other questions for staff or the applicant? I have a, a comment, not a question. Uh, with with regard to the flashing light uh, at fire station number four on two seventy nine, there are no flashing lights, and there's been several cases that I've seen where. You, there's a dip there and you don't realize a truck is coming unless you hear it. Uh, and so I think, I think flashing lights should be at all fire stations. And I'm glad to see uh, that you do intend to include one with this station. Thanks, sir. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, we'll take this up at our uh, our uh, planning commission meeting scheduled for uh, October the 12th. Uh, and that concludes our new business. Do we have anything for open discussion? Staff does not. All right, anybody, any of the other commissioners have anything for open discussion? The obvious question, Mr. Chairman, on sunset. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, well, Mr. Tapp's not here today, but if you drive by, or maybe I do see Mr. Tapp on the phone, but I think if you drive by there, I've, I've seen them out working most days on our, on that road. So I think they're oh, yeah. making progress slowly, but I think they're making progress. Yeah, I'll see them working. Yeah. I, I do have a quick <laughs> question. I have a quick yes, question, sir. Mr. Ellis. What the heck is that yes, behind you? That is a uh, that is the rail yard bike park in downtown Rogers, Arkansas. Uh, okay. We just we finished up the we're finishing up the construction on it right now, uh, but we did the design on it, and uh, that was my that was my background. 
yeah. from another well, meeting and I forgot to change it. So you got to see it, but that's a big, yeah, that's a large black part. And, and I wonder if that was scenery of some sort. <laughs> Yeah, Thank it is. You. It's a it's a bike park here in Northwest Arkansas. Okay. All righty. Anything else? All right. Seeing none, uh, we do have our planning commission meeting scheduled for Monday, October twelfth at four thirty p.m. And uh, city council will be holding a work session Monday, October nineteenth at five thirty. And their regular scheduled meeting will be October twenty sixth at six thirty. And then we have another work session scheduled for October 29th. Is that correct, Mr. Lynn or Ms. Robertson? I'm anticipating. I need some head shaking. So yes, we will have our work session on October 29th at 4:30. Uh, and with that, we stand adjourned. Good. See y'all. Thanks. Thank you.